ready, set, swipe. A very new controversial study shows that the number of Americans who found a partner through an online website or a dating app has increased significantly since 1980 from zero to over 50 percent, while other avenues of meeting someone like through friends and family, work, school, in your neighborhood or at a bar has declined. So, Amber, what do you think is the best way uh, to meet someone these days? Is it through an algorithm that considers a lot of data points and personal preferences tailored for you, designed to give you a perfect person what you want? Or do you think we have to go back to the older traditional ways? <laughs> Yeah, sure. You can probably guess where I'm going to go with this, but let me just start by saying I did meet my husband on a dating app, so I'm going to sound like a total hypocrite. But I think generally speaking, it's better to meet someone in person. And the problem that I have with dating apps is I think they really dehumanize the experience and lead to these very impersonal interactions that lead people to feel like the person on the other end of the screen is disposable. There's so many options on dating apps. I probably went on 100 plus dates before I met my husband over the past five, 10 years. Um, and I think people, um, because they have so many options, end up always looking for that next best thing. And I think it's important to remember that love is not just some uh, algorithmic uh, a decision beyond your control. It's not a case where if I have exactly the right things in common with somebody that we're going to fall in love. Love in a lot of ways is very much a conscious decision and a choice that you make every day to work with somebody and be with somebody and put in the dedication to making that relationship work. And dating apps promise to give you your so-called soulmate or perfect match. But until you actually meet someone in person and see how you're able to communicate, I don't think that those things matter quite as much. So obviously I've made it clear where I stand by waiting the fourth response in that tweet that has apparently been very controversial, but I welcome hearing people's opinions on this. I find it fascinating, but I think we spend so much of our social time online. And when I wrote that, I didn't actually mean on like a website dedicated for dating or even a dating app. I guess like, would you consider it through friends of friends if you meet someone via Instagram? Like you see them in a video or in a picture or on TikTok on your For You feed, on Twitter. I met my current boyfriend through Twitter because we're interested in the same kind of economics. And I came up on his feed because professors that he follow were liking a post where I was promoting my new podcast and Stephanie Kelton's book, The Deficit Myth. That's how we met was through a tweet. And so I think there are innocent ways you can meet someone online. I don't want to say innocent. There are organic ways you can meet someone online without intentionally being there to date. I'm like the worst online dater. I've had the <laughs> apps. I don't I think I've went, gone on one or two dates ever from an app. So I'm critical of the dating app culture. I think the next best thing phenomena is a huge problem with modern dating. But I also think that meeting someone online is okay and can happen organically, but not be on an intentional dating website. There's definitely an important distinction to be made there. You're exactly right. And I know plenty of people who have also met their significant others that they are now married to on Twitter. I have dated people from Twitter and it's definitely a more organic experience than what happens on a dating app to be sure. I think the proliferation of dating apps as we see a decline in young people either having sex or having relationships uh, should ha have us asking questions about whether these things are doing their intended purpose. And we also have to remember, too, that it is not in the interest of the company that owns these apps for you to delete them and not be on them. They say, for example, on Hinge, that it's the dating app meant to be deleted. But if everyone who was on Hinge found a partner and deleted the app, obviously they wouldn't be making any money. And there has been some studies that show that these apps don't show you exactly what your perfect match would be per se, but what they think you wanna see. It's kind of the equivalent to how when I'm on Instagram, I keep getting videos of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey going out to dinner in New York City. And I don't actually want this content, but for some reason I feel myself being drawn to it all the time. And I wish Instagram would stop showing it to me, but yet I always click on it. And I think that's kind of a similar phenomenon to how people behave on dating apps.
Yeah, I want to stop dating guys like this, but I keep swiping right on them. Why is this <laughs> happening? Um, I I think you're right. They always advertise, like, designed to be deleted. But are you really? Would you still make money if that was the case? It's a good point. They could be giving us duds on purpose on those apps. So just scroll Twitter, guys. Just <laughs> find someone on your For You feed. Obviously, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are taken, but there are many other options on your feed that you will find. I also like that you say, uh, I've dated people from Twitter before, as if they're just always a Twitter person when you meet them there. But I think the, the reason we've seen an increase in dating online since 1980 is because that is when the internet was created. Um, I don't know if it's that people prefer the internet or right now we're so obsessed with being social on the internet and using social media that that's why we've seen it skyrocket. Maybe we'll see it plateau as the excitement around being social on the so the internet uh, using social media declines. Maybe we're in a flux period right now and slowly as all of our platforms are moving towards less personal networks and more towards, you know, media content from someone you've never met or it's getting commercialized and you're getting pushed a lot of ads and shopping. I think people are, are getting tired of that kind of content on social media and may pull back and may meet people more in person again. I don't know. But uh, the Internet hasn't always been a factor. It became a factor in 1980. So I don't want to confuse correlation with causation here in the data. Yeah, I do feel like the recent spike that we see on that graph is probably a side effect of the fact that people just don't engage in their community as much. Social media tends to be sort of the meeting place um, for, for people. I mean, people don't go to church as often. They don't go to community centers for whatever reason. I mean, people really did used to go to bowling alleys and bingo and all of these um, little small town events to meet up with their friends or meet up with family friends. And I think one of the underrated reasons why it is good to meet people through friends or through family is that you can kind of filter out who might not share the same values as you. And you also have a rating on that person's potential safety. Obviously not a fail safe, but there have been some situations of friends of mine who have gone out on online dates and have found themselves in some pretty unsafe situations. Um, so the safety aspect of this cannot be ignored as well. Yeah, I have been unsettled in the past with recommendations from friends as to who I should date. Just really, you think this is a person that I would be interested in? I think sometimes friends' recommendations can cause rifts in friend groups. I don't know. I get afraid to date in the friend group. But to your point about being in, in bowling and in social settings where you meet strangers and you befriend strangers, it's weird because it's dangerous to meet people online. We grew up with our parents saying, you know, don't meet strangers on the Internet. And now we summon them through these dating apps to go out alone with them in intimate settings, which the more you think about it, the more concerning it is, which is why most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. But now we have this this weird kind of animosity with just strangers we're sharing space with in the bowling alley. Like mm -hmm. if a stranger comes up to your friend group that you're bowling with, it's it's almost like, oh, God, why is that guy coming over here? What's he going to say to us? Is he weird? You know, there's there used to be, I think, more of an openness to communicate with strangers. My dad still does it beautifully. So I'm assuming it's an age thing. He will get into very detailed conversations with people who are cashiers at the gas station. And I think it's beautiful and lovely. And the older I get, the more I realize I'm becoming like him. But there are people that are very not open to that. And you find that out very fast. My dad was actually the same way. So that's hilarious. Maybe it's a it's a blue collar dad thing. But um, to mm -hmm. your point, I, I, I do feel I think for for both men and women, because women have kind of been conditioned to think that a man coming up to them is always creepy. And then a man doesn't want to go up to a woman to ask her out um, in public because he thinks he's going to be perceived as creepy or as a threat. And so those interactions have really declined significantly from both directions. And I think it just makes people meeting people organically in public a lot harder than if you're on a dating app, you both know what your intentions are, at least in some respect. And so that creep factor kind of goes away. But I hope that we get back to being more open as a society. Certainly the pandemic helped exacer exacerbate a lot of these issues as well. And I just don't think it's good for interpersonal relationships for us to get away from interacting face to face. We're going to take a quick break and be back with more rising after this.